Few commodities have a worse reputation when it comes to the destruction of tropical forests and peatlands than palm oil. The amount of land cultivated for the crop is four times what it was 40 years ago. And as the realm of the African oil palm tree has expanded across the tropics, it has supplanted millions upon millions of hectares of skyscraping rainforest and peat-containing wetlands. That's especially true in Southeast Asia, where most of the world's palm oil comes from. In the process, the spread of oil palm has meant the destruction of wildlife habitat, carbon stores, and ecosystems vital to the material and spiritual needs of human communities. Palm oil's defenders point out that the commodity has served as the foundation of growing economies like Indonesia and Malaysia. In those countries, millions of people work directly or indirectly with the industry. And the trees themselves churn out more oil, which is used in cosmetics, soap, and foodstuffs, on smaller areas of land than other sources of vegetable fat. On average, it's six and a half times more efficient than temperate grown crops such as soybeans, sunflower, and rapeseed. Industrial cultivation of oil palm is growing in places like Papua New Guinea and parts of Africa and Latin America. Today, conservation groups are calling for an approach in these places that pays attention to the lessons learned from Southeast Asia. They argue that oil palm companies and the governments of countries where the crop is grown must support indigenous and community rights, protect forests and peatlands, and ensure the fair distribution of economic benefits. In tandem, the world's growing population means the demand for inexpensive vegetable oil, and a lot of it, is apt to continue to rise. So how can we make sure it doesn't lead to further destruction of the world's rainforests? The most visible reaction to the forest destruction caused by the palm oil industry has been the formation of the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil. The RSPO was created in 2004 and its members are companies involved in the production, processing and trading of palm oil. Conservation organizations like WWF International are also part of the organization. To meet the RSPO's criteria for certification, companies can't grow oil palm on land that had old growth forest or pristine peatland at least after a certain date. Habitat for wildlife and other areas of high conservation value on plantations must be protected. Companies are also supposed to treat workers fairly and they can't acquire land for their plantations at the expense of indigenous and local communities. Further guidelines encourage companies to reduce their carbon emissions and the release of toxic pollution. At the same time, environmentalists, human rights advocates, and NGOs have criticized the RSPO. They argue that deforestation, land grabs, and exploitative working conditions still occur on oil palm plantations, in some cases even involving RSPO member or certified companies. And the RSPO has a long way to go to encompass the entire industry. Currently, only about 19% of the world's palm oil is certified by the RSPO and just 3.6 million of the 20 million hectares or 8.9 million of the 49 million acres under cultivation meets the group's sustainability standards. Investigations have also revealed that corruption continues to plague the palm oil industry, with companies bribing officials to turn a blind eye to deforestation or the sidelining of local and indigenous communities in the pursuit of profits. Still, proponents of the RSPO say it has provided a forum for corporations and advocacy groups to reconcile competing priorities and move the industry towards sustainability, however slowly. Deforestation for new oil palm cultivation has fallen recently in Indonesia and Malaysia, the world's two largest producers, even as prices for palm oil continue to rise. How a combination of factors might have played a role isn't clear, Indonesia's moratorium on new plantations, stricter regulation and sustainability practices, and the lack of remaining forested areas for growing the crop all may have contributed to this decline in forest loss. A more recent trend in sustainability has been the push for jurisdictional certification. These programs vary, but in some cases, the goal is to meet or even exceed the standards set by the RSBO. In one example, the state of Sabah in Malaysian Borneo, which alone produces 7% of the world's palm oil, has set out to overhaul the industry's impacts. Along with ending deforestation for oil palm plantations, the certification standard calls for phasing out plantations in areas that aren't optimal for growing oil palm trees, 
along marshy riverbanks, for example, where it threatens water quality and cuts off critical wildlife corridors. Leaving the most productive plantations in service provides a pathway to still meet demand and maintain this linchpin of Saba's economy. That leaves the less than ideal spots as prime targets for the restoration of natural forest. The effort also aims to help smallholder producers by providing small-scale farmers with tools to increase their yields or by investing in livelihoods that give them an alternative to growing oil palm Proponents say the certification movement could help Saba continue to produce palm oil while helping to bring back some of the state's forests. Even with far-reaching international programs, the final say in the sustainability of palm oil production may lie with us as consumers. Voluntary certification schemes like those set out by the RSBO may slow deforestation or improve worker conditions. But the money we spend on the products we use every day may have the loudest voice in the end. It can be as simple as ensuring that all of the things we buy come from certified sources. At the extreme end of the spectrum, campaigns may call for boycotting products from companies that stubbornly refuse to reform their production practices. It is that demand, as a result of choices made in the supermarkets of Europe, the United States, India, and China, often far from the former forests where oil palm now grows, that has driven the unparalleled growth of the industry. Today, demand that insists that palm oil-containing items are not produced at the expense of forests or community land or unfair labor practices could once again shape the market landscape, this time for the better. <laughs>